just got one little joke to share tonight. I didn't write it, so don't blame me. <clears throat> Big Ed seemed to always fall asleep during the Sunday sermon. His wife was fed up and decided to deal with the embarrassing situation. The next Sunday, when he fell asleep, she quietly removed some potent Limburger cheese from a Ziploc bag in her purse and passed it under his nose. Groggily startled, Big Ed <laughs> blurted out, No, Helen, no, don't kiss me now. <laughs> I don't know. Thought it was kind of funny. Okay, I got one more. A kindergarten teacher was walking around observing her classroom of children while they were drawing pictures. As she got to one girl who was working diligently, she asked what the drawing was. The girl replied, I'm drawing God. The teacher paused and said, but no one knows what God looks like. Without looking up from her drawing, the girl replied, well, they will in a minute. It's <clears throat> pretty good. Yeah, God, so we just thank you for your anointing tonight, that your word would be preached in boldness and straight to our heart. Yeah, God, we just thank you for the simple gospel of what you've done on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share just a quick story. I thought you were going to have a word. Um, <laughs> it's like, dang, you really got a word. I should have asked. Um, I had a story that happened yesterday where I was uh, hiking Avila Ridge and I saw these two guys in front and I just felt like I needed to share the gospel with these people. And I didn't have like a word of knowledge or a prophetic word. It was just like, hey, this is Jesus. This is what he's done in my life. He's amazing. And, you know, they were kind of like startled a little bit. And anyways, I keep walking a little bit further and this lady is like hunched over and like, curling like you know throwing up or like trying to and yelling the like panic mode like ah, ah like this for like 10 15 minutes <clears throat> so i'm like okay do i need to be careful was there like a snake or something or you know i'm tiptoeing and then she goes something bit me on my head it's burning it's burning and her friend is talking to the 911 operator but she's panicking too and so I just go in that situation. I just say, in the name of Jesus, just release peace. You know, pain, leave. And she starts calming down. But, you know, it's still really burning really hard, you know, like on her head. And the people that I just shared Jesus with, they came up. And they actually pulled out the stinger out of her head. And she started feeling better. But at this time, they'd already called the, the firefighters and the medics. And she was better. I was like, okay, she can walk back now. She's good. Um, but about 15 or 20 minutes later, all the medics and firefighters are there. There's literally eight people for a bee sting. And I'm like, this is a little excessive. This is just a bee sting. You know, like, it, you know, you, you know, put some ice on it. Um, and so I figured, okay, she's good. She's taken care of. There's plenty of firefighters for that bee sting. So I'm just going to finish the hike. <laughs> And so I'm walking back down Avila Ridge, and I see this helicopter, and it says rescue helicopter. And it came, it literally kept coming back and forth trying to find the girl that got stung in the head. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's where our tax dollars are going, is right there. Um, but she could have been allergic, you know, there could have been obviously other reasons. Um, but I was like, man, sometimes, you know, that can be us is that we can blow one thing out of proportion and we make it this big ordeal and it was like, well, it's actually just a bee sting. We're just going to pull that out, you know, and you're going to be okay. You're going to be. Um, but it's easier when you're outside looking in. If you're that girl during that moment, it's probably pretty gnarly, you know. And, you know, <clears throat> another interesting thing that happened was I got asked to do a wedding Saturday in Santa Margarita and... You know, this couple, they're not believers, and like there was about 100 people there. There might have been four believers at the wedding, and so you're kind of uncomfortable. This is my second wedding ever doing, so I'm like a little out of my comfort zone. And they said, hey, just, you know, share whatever's on your heart, 
And it's kind of hard to like really share things that you don't really know the people too well. And especially when they're not like seeing eye to eye in the same faith, you know. And then there's all these. So anyways, I just shared out of, you know, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. And then I feel like the Lord said, share on the humility of Jesus. You know, one way to win people over is to share on the humility of Jesus, that he came to serve and not to be served. You know, if he doesn't come demonstrative, he's not coming lording it over people. He came as a humble servant. Um, but anyways, I, you know, I shared a couple things and made it a little light, and, but made sure it's about them. It's not about my sermon, my message, it's about them. Um, but it's like 10 minutes long, and, you know, I say, kiss the bride, and then I walk over to where the hors d'oeuvres are, and they said, hey, um, you know, great message, but we were standing up the whole time. You didn't tell us to sit down. I was like, oh, so that, you know, when they stand up and the, the father gives, you know, his daughter to the, the future husband, they were still standing up the whole time. I was like, oh my gosh, but it's all good. It wasn't a super long, it, if that was an hour message, that would have been a bummer. Imagine an hour standing, you know, so yeah, that was, I'm learning. It's my second wedding. <laughs> But that is pretty crazy, you know, Jesus, like his first miracle was at a wedding feast, you know, like that was the way he decided, and, and obviously he wasn't wanting in the beginning to, but Mary, his mother, like pulled on the anointing to, to turn the water into wine. That must have been some really good wine, you know, I think that was, I don't know. <clears throat> but I want to share out of Galatians 2.20. If you guys have your Bible or phone, and it says, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And this is a different translation, same verse. I consider myself as having died, and now I'm enjoying a new existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. And so a lot of times, you know, as believers, you know, we get saved and, you know, we start really pursuing the Lord. And we have, we feel like we have to keep fixing our old man. We have to keep fixing our old sin nature and try to get him better. But what Jesus did on the cross is that he actually killed our old man, that he's actually been crucified. Instead of trying to fix the old man of fear or trying to fix the man of depression, when Jesus died on the cross, he killed that man. Like he's actually dead. So, you know, for years, I'm just, you know, we've been trying to fix, like, okay, I'm just going to try to not, okay, you know, the old man of anxiety, I'm just going to try to make sure he's not anxious. But Jesus killed that man of anxiety. You know, the man that is fearful, Jesus killed that fearful man on the cross. The man that's depressed, the man that's, you know, hopeless or addicted, that he's been crucified on the cross. So it's not trying to make him better or get a better version of the old man. He's actually dead. You know, when they're dead, they're dead. <laughs> and it's like having a 1980 Honda Civic, and if you have one, it's... It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but it's like we're trying to fix this Honda Civic for every year, and it's never getting to the place we want it. We have to let that thing be gone, and then we have the brand new Lamborghini 2020 that's not even released. You know, we have the brand new Ferrari, and it has the best everything because it's Christ in us. And so instead of trying to keep getting a better version of our old man, Old man is dead. He's gone. And we get, it's Christ living inside of us. And so, I mean, I'm preaching to myself because for so many years I've been trying to just get a better version of the old man. I'm just going to try to fix him up, try to groom him, try to get him better. But he's not, he's gone, you know. That's what it says right here. And if you guys don't believe me yet, I want to go to Romans chapter 6. <laughs> In verse 3 it says, Or have you forgotten that when you were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died, 
and were buried with Christ by baptism, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we've been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we die with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. He will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. I just want to say that one more time. When Jesus died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourself dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. So it's like when we get baptized in water, we're signifying that we, our old man is dead and we come alive to the new man. And I think that's, it's good news. I don't think it's something where, oh man, it's like, no, your old sin nature is dead. I think that's really, should be really good news, you know? And um, just realizing it's not enough just for our old man to be dead, but the new man, Jesus, is living inside of us. You know, it's like the greatest mystery for ages and generations was Christ in us, the hope of glory. That was the mystery that was concealed for generations, and it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And so it's like when we pray for healing, it's not just up to our special prayers. It's the greatest healer lives inside of us. Or when we pray for deliverance, the deliverer dwells here. Or we're prophesying for someone, the greatest prophet dwells inside of us, Jesus. Whatever it is, if you're evangelizing, you've got to realize the greatest evangelist dwells inside of you. Whatever, it, you know, teaching or miracle, it, bless you. Yeah, double blessing for you. <laughs> or, you know, if you're praying for a miracle, we've got to realize, okay, who's inside of us? The miracle worker is here. And then we can, sometimes you don't, you don't even need words. You can just put your hand and just, you know, healing happens. And so... Sometimes we put it all up to ourselves and all of our certain prayers we feel like we need to do, but it's we got to realize who's you know living inside of us because that's the hope of glory, you know. <clears throat> this is a good quote. It says, "You were united with him in his death. What died? The entire fallen personality, your old depressed self, your old sinful self." The old fearful you was buried. The old anxious, unbelieving you took a bullet. Your poverty died with him. Your sickness died with him. Every bit of curse died with him. Every bit of darkness and disease that you once were died with him. All your acne and road rage took a tumble. I don't know why I said that. That's the mystery. Your old religious sober self was also crucified. The new you is happy, alive, and full of the wine of his love. The new you is full of faith. The new true self is prosperous, bold, and overflowing with life, hope, peace, and fruitfulness. The old critical introverted you is dead. And so realizing like Jesus, like our old man, he's gone, you know? Like our old sinful nature, sometimes we always th feel like it's a, it's a battle, but we got to reckon him dead, you know? I, it's, just, it's good news for me because instead of, okay, I'm going to work on my, the fear that comes my way. No, fear is dead in my life. I'm going to try to work on No, anxiety is dead. And what Jesus did on the cross is way greater than what Adam did when he fell. Sometimes we're so focused on the, the first disobedience of Adam but we forget what the second Adam did for everyone. We so focused on the curses that were placed on us, we forget you know, the blessings and the righteousness that were imputed to us through Jesus. So this is Romans 5.18. 
If by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, so that's Adam, how much more will those who receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Just as through the disobedience of the one man, which is Adam, the many were made sinners, also through the obedience of the one man, Jesus, the many will be made righteous. And so we're actually, you know, it's not a pride thing to say we're actually the righteousness of Christ. It's not like, oh, you're just being prideful. No, it's actually pride when we say we're just sinners saved by grace. Because it's saying that the cross wasn't enough for us. That we're actually standing, like right now, we actually stand righteous, holy, and blameless. Like now. And it's not because of our works, it's because of his work on the cross. It's because of the blood of Jesus that every person is qualified to stand holy and righteous now. Not one day finally when you memorize the book of Leviticus or whatever. It's like now, because of the blood of Jesus, you're righteous. And not on our own works, it's on his work. And when you believe you're righteous... If you actually believe you're holy because of the blood, you're going to act that out. It's actually going to be the fruit. If you just believe you're just a sinner, you're probably going to sin because that's your identity. But if you actually believe you're righteous and holy, that's going to overflow out of your life. Does that make sense? And so it's not pride to say, actually, I'm righteous and holy. And it's not because of your works. It's by the blood of Jesus, period. And that's, that should set people free from religion or performance or, or trying harder to get to God one day. It's like, no, he came down to us, and he met us where we're at. And just, just really putting our confidence in the blood of Jesus, period. And then it's, you know, when the enemy accuses you of your past, it's like, no, but I got the blood of Jesus. I stand righteous. I stand holy now. You know, when you're reminded of your old man, it's not the Lord reminding you. You know, he convicts us, but he doesn't keep reminding us of our past, reminding of us the old nature. Like, that doesn't do God a favor. And so he reminds us of Christ in us. Of, you know, with Jesus. I love what Luke says. You know, he, it's about, you know, it is union. It's like Jesus is here. He's not far off. He's like, he can't, he's here. That's, I, mean, I think we forget that. Like, he's here now. Like, and everyone here, like, Jesus is here. I think we should, like, just dwell on that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy if you think of that. Like, the God of the universe isn't in a temple. He's inside of us. Like, closer to, than face-to-face is when, he, when someone lives inside of you. And uh, that is amazing. Whew. And it's not just when you're praying that he's there, it's 24-7 he's there. So even when you're watching a non-Christian movie, he's still there. Or even when you're at the beach, or let's say you're playing just basketball, and you're not even singing a song of worship, he's still there. You know? And so just realizing that, um, that's powerful. I think it should bring a lot of freedom to us. It's like, it's not in what we do, it's... It's who, who's inside of us. <clears throat> and here's some other, some good news. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, Who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So we actually have his mind. Ezekiel 36.26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So we have his heart. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So the 1980 Honda Civic is gone. And I'll do respect to if you have one again. Uh, but it's like the new creation is here now. And that is just something to really just not forget. <clears throat> I just want to quote a couple more verses. Okay. 
Colossians 3, 3, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 2 Timothy 2, 11, it is a trustworthy statement for if we died with him, we also live with him. 2 Corinthians 5.14, the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, our old man. As he is, so are we in this world. And so just going back to just the gospel and the cross, um, and just realizing it's just Jesus here. Um, yeah, guys, so we just thank you. I want to share a dream I had about a week ago. I was just in my room, you know, going to sleep, and (laughs) I think sometimes, and I'm talking to myself too, we take, I think we could just take ourselves too seriously, or we, we take God, like He is fun, you know, and He is a friend. And yes, yes, you know, we're in warfare, I get it, or whatever, but it's like he's a friend. And he actually killed the principalities, and he won. And he's the victor. And it's not like, who's going to win today? Is it God or is it the devil? No, God, God's already won. And he's on the throne now. And he's already, the, de- the devil's already been defeated. Um, but anyways, yeah, I was going back to, or I was going to sleep, and I had this dream of all of these whales that were at Pismo Pier. And they were all over. They were breaching like tons of them. And there was probably, it was everywhere I looked, there was whales breaching. And that's not super common for Pismo Beach. Sometimes you'll see once, like two of them. And um, I was going to go on the pier. And I was like, uh-oh, I'm not supposed to do this. I need to go back. And then there was all these cruise ships in the ocean. And the whales were actually breaching out of the water and then actually capsizing some of the, the cruise ships. And so anyways, the dream ended, and I'm just praying, okay, God, like, what does this mean? And, you know, whales resemble moves of God. So they could resemble revival moves of God happening. And I was like, okay, what was the pier? And pier is when you're peer, like peer pressure, when you're trying to follow the crowd, it's actually the wrong direction. It could be in danger. And then um, I was like, okay, what was the cruise ships? Because the cruise ships were getting knocked over by these waves. And cruise ships, you, can't, you just cruise through life. And it's actually you're cruising with Jesus, but you're not fully all in. And so I was like, well, this is a pretty gnarly word, you know, because I don't want to be capsized by the, the whale or whatever. Um, and so just, but I think a lot of times we're asking for a move of God. We're asking for revival, which is a great, you know, prayer to have, um, but also to position ourselves to be able to handle it when he does come strong and to actually be aware of when, you know, the Holy Spirit's being poured out. Um, and not to have them in a certain box where it has to look a certain way. Um, it's like, God, you, it doesn't have to look like the past. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm. And so, I don't know, I've just been almost done, but I don't know, just being honest, like I just don't, I don't really enjoy just doing a good service. I want a move of God still. Like that is really what my heart is after. You're like it's it's so much more than just a church meeting. Like I love it. We need to gather. Yes, we need to listen and worship. But it's like God, what are you doing here to really steward a move of God? You know, like how can we partner together? You know? It's like it's so much bigger than you know, singing songs, and that's important to do still. And so that's just what I'm hungry for. I believe a lot of you guys are hungry too for that. And just something genuine, something that's real, you know. Like, we don't have to fake it. I want the real thing. Like, I'm not going to do a courtesy fall. I'm not going to, it's like, it's either, it's either God or it's not. And so I'm not going to pretend if it's not God. Like, if so, either someone gets healed or they don't. 
Either it's God's voice or it's not. So like I'm really after the real thing, just the authentic like just presence of God and outside the church and inside. And so, you know, that is something that I just want to pray tonight um, for. <laughs> um, and just be open to when the Holy Spirit is, you know, ministering or, or moving. Um, so, yeah, let me just pray. <clears throat> Yeah, Jesus, we just thank you for, we put our focus on what you've done for us, not what we have to do to climb the ladder to get to you. We just celebrate the finished work of the cross. We just thank you that our old man has been crucified, that he's dead, and that, Holy Spirit, you live inside of us. Yeah. Yeah, God, we do ask just for strategy from heaven for this region. Just, I pray that you would give people here uh, dreams and, and visions of, of strategy of how to really steward a move of, move of the Lord on the Central Coast. Yeah, God, I do bless, I just honor all the churches here all the different denominations, that we are still one body, that Jesus, you get all the glory, regardless of what denomination there is, that we're still the body. I just pray that there would be honor of different denominations or even small differences between different churches. I just pray for a unity with the churches here. And I believe there is, but I just pray for more. Thank you, Jesus. You got to just thank you that you dwell inside of us. There's no separation anymore. There's no distance. Hmm. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I just want to, I'm going to step out a little bit, and then we're going to be done, so maybe five more minutes. Um, it's like Peter, when he was in the boat, he was comfortable in the boat, because he's not going to fall. But then when you step out, that's when things can happen, but it's good things. Um, so during worship, I was just kind of just trying to tune in to his voice. And I saw a picture of like cherries. And I wasn't sure. And sometimes when I see cherries, it reminds me of someone's name, which is Sherry. So is there a Sherry? Does someone know a Sherry or, Yeah. Your mom's name is Sherry? Okay. Um, and when I saw that, I saw two, it was like a celebration toast. And I felt like there's going to be a celebration coming to Sherry, like a toasting. It was like two wine glasses. They were clashed. It was like a toast. And I just feel like there is a great celebration coming for Sherry, for your mom. Um, I'm not sure if she's been waiting or something to really come to pass, but I believe there's going to be a significant just blessing for her. Um, I just want to pray for her. And let's just extend her hands. Jesus, we thank you for Sherry. God, we thank you for a mighty blessing coming upon her in the name of Jesus. I just declare a wonderful blessing upon her spiritually uh, in, in in the natural, any way, we just release that. We come into agreement. And I'm just seeing a picture of like this pitcher getting poured out upon her, just all over. So God, we just release just your tangible presence just to overwhelm her even right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I always pray for dreams to be upon her straight from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, God, we just honor your voice right now. Just we thank you for your voice, how clearly you speak and how easy you speak to us. It's not hard. We just break off the lie that it's hard to hear you. Or we break off the lie that I can't, but everyone else can. We just break that lie off. We say your, your sheep hear your voice now. Yeah, so God, over every person now that we hear your voice. 
And we put our faith in your ability to speak to us, not our ability to try to hear you. That you're a really good communicator. And you, you meet us where we're at. Thank you, Jesus.